This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Chelsea. Chelsea is a champion surfer, so she's accustomed to moving super fast, which is why she relies on super fast broadband brought to her through Flow's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her family sharing and surfing and saving each month. Combined, she bundles her Flow mobile, home phone, and TV services so she can enjoy much more for much less, and so can you. Visit any Flow retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994, or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. This is your Barbados Today afternoon update. It's Thursday, June 30th. A warm welcome to you. I'm Kmar Jordan. A vicious rumor that's how the Barbados Water Authority has responded to a message making rounds on social media charging that the island's water supply is unsafe. The message claims that there's lead in the water and this is partially responsible for a recent number of sudden deaths of citizens. Corporate communications specialist of the Barbados Water Authority, Joanne Haig, tells Barbados today there's nothing more than a rumor that's circulating and the authority will be issuing a full statement shortly on the matter. We, together with the Environmental Protection Department, the Ministry of Health, the meter manufacturers, will be seeking to put this matter uh, to bed. It is a vicious rumor. It is not true and we will be coming to the public shortly and bringing our position, our scientific proof, so that the public will know that our meters are safe and our water quality is extremely safe and that we meet and continue to meet the standards of the World Health Organization. In other news this Wednesday, social activist David Comichon has scored a victory against the government in the law courts. Madam Justice Pamela Beckles this morning declared null and void the government's move to enact regulations requiring Barbadians to be fingerprinted upon entering and leaving the country. The government did not file a defense. David Commissioner tells Barbados today he's not at all surprised at today's outcome. The, the constitution is clear. The effect of the regulations are clear. The regulations clearly say that in certain in circumstances where a Barbadian citizen um, refuses to uh, permit himself to be fingerprinted on returning to Barbados, he shall be prevented from re-entering. Now, th that is clearly a breach of Section 22 of the Constitution, right? So um, then, then the fact that they were not properly enacted is absolutely clear. More than a dozen people have been left homeless after fire, destroyed three houses and damaged a fourth at Chapman Streets in Michael around 2.30 this morning. More details as they come to hand. Perish the thought of building a new hospital in Barbados. Professor Sir Henry Fraser issued this frank advice as he addressed the top brass of the Democratic Labour Party last evening at a lecture hosted by the party at Almond Bay Hotel. Citing a past report which showed that it would cost some $9 million to construct a new hospital, Sir Henry said the island does not have the money to construct a new hospital and he suggested that the real remedy lies with fixing the state-owned Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Our problem at the hospital has always been, and it fluctuates, it's a problem of lack of staff, it's a problem of up and down morale, and it's a problem of equipment, and in recent times a problem of shortages. So let us acknowledge the facts and do what is needed rather than building castles in the air. At the same time, he made a case for the government to develop a state-of-the-art medical facility at the site of the St. Joseph Hospital in St. Peter. He says it's a huge opportunity for the island to bring in much-needed foreign exchange. It will be a win-win, not only for considerable income through medical care, the branding of Barbados, but the attendant hotel bookings. Everyone with a hotel within 10 miles will benefit. And state-of-the-art facilities and specialized surgeons working together with our healthcare team will also save us a fortune in medical aid scheme which the government can no longer afford, in overseas referrals, and in travel for specialist care by the filthy rich. So we would not only make money, but we would save a fortune. There's regional and international news after this short break. I love it. It's your girl Azizi, the Barbados City Crop Over Superstar 2015. The competition is even more exciting this year. There will be three champions. The public will choose their junior, soccer royal, and pick the crop champion. So here's how it works. Go to our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Barbados Today to fill out your competition form. 
Two, upload your video with your song to my Melissa Day's Facebook page. Three, make sure you invite all your friends and family to vote for you. The contestant with the most votes by the end of their competition will be crowned champion. I gave me a sweetness. I know you like sweetness. All of this is sweetness. To regional news now, big news for Guyana, ExxonMobil reports it has found a huge oil and gas fine, said to be possibly worth billions off the country's coast. The fine was made in an appraisal well. Last year, Exxon found oil and gas in another offshore well, and at the time, Exxon said that that fine held as much as 700 million barrels of crude worth an estimated $40 billion. The company is now planning to drill a third well in the coming weeks. Maybe we should get them to come over to Bridgetown. For the field, Boris Johnson, one of the leading voices in the Brexit campaign, that's the vote where Britain uh, voted to leave the EU. He, and also the man considered to be the favorite to replace the outgoing British Prime Minister, David Cameron, delivered a bombshell today, announcing he doesn't want the job. The former London mayor says, after consulting with his colleagues, he's concluded that he's not going for that office or that place at number 10. This is our chance to think globally again, to lift our eyes to the horizon, to bring our unique British voice and values, powerful, humane, progressive, to the great global forums without being elbowed aside by a supranational body. And instead of being afflicted by nerves, let us seize this chance and make this our moment to stand tall in the world. That is the agenda for the next Prime Minister of this country. But I must tell you, my friends, you who have waited faithfully for the punchline of this speech, that having consulted colleagues and in view of the circumstances in Parliament, I have concluded that person cannot be me. My role, my role will be to give every possible support to the next Conservative administration to make sure that we properly fulfil the mandate of the people that was delivered at the referendum and to champion the agenda I believe in. Well, that's our news and sports, but for more, you can log on to www.barbadosday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, our email updates, or you can like us on Facebook. We're also on Izumi Media and bus terminals or screenplay in a supermarket or a gas station near you. If you're moving around Barbados today, you can also check it out on Channel 99, that's on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Kmar Jordan. Have a great afternoon and be sure to join us later on this evening for our next update.